Sorry, I have to make it for a little lost time. So let me first announce the winner of the 2022 New Japan Cup. It is Zack Sabre Jr. Who I basically had to backtrack, retro, and retweak my predictions after he threw Osprey out of the tournament. I was wondering why I didn't make an announcement video of it yesterday. It's because my Wi-Fi got fried Saturday night. He ended up going dead on me Saturday night. And because the backup battery went dead on the router, on the, on the, on the Wi-Fi box. Anyway. We already know he's facing Okada on April the 9th. But what about the rest of the card? Well, let's break it down piece by piece. This is my prediction video for April 9th, Ryogoku Sumo Hall, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Hyper Battle 2022. Let's rant. Let's roll. This, this card looks pretty decent on paper, anyway. So let's start from the bottom and work our way up. First up. Eight-man tag team match. It's the team of Jado, G.O.D., Tamatanga and Tangaloa, and Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Bullet Club, comprising of Bad Luck Fale, Gato, Yujiro Takahashi, and Chase Owens. Since getting kicked out of the Bullet Club, G.O.D. and Jado, in spite of getting back up in the forms of Team 6 or 9, Yusuke Iguchi, Master Wado, and Roshi Tanahashi, keep ending on, up on the losing end of the stick. I mean, look at the history between the seven of these eight competitors. G.O.D., Tama was there day one with Fale when Bullet Club was formed at Dentaku in 2013. Jado and Gato. 33 years of friendship. Attack at the hip, whether it was in Great Bash Heel, Chaos, or Bullet Club. But due to the fact Jay White can't make it back to Japan because of visa issues time and time again, and, and basically had to threaten all the Bullet Club to side with him against G.O.D., G.O.D. and Jado are gone. And it's sickening to me that this had to come down. It came down to this. Now, I thought Kenta would be coming back by now, and this would go to Bullet Club. It may still, I may still pick Bullet Club, but here's the thing now. Given the fact that it's Yujiro instead... Maybe things could pan out a little differently, and G.O.D. and Tanahashi may get that win they've been looking for. But then again, I don't know. That being said, I'm going to take Bullet Club to win this one again. So don't be too surprised if G.O.D. and Jado finally get that W. Next up, Shingo Takagi and Tetsuya Naito of Los Ingobernables stay up home, facing off against the United Empire's Will Ospreay and Aaron Hanare. My picks to win, I'm going to go Ospreay and Hanare on this one. Ironic that a year ago, Hanare quit, ditched his babyface character and became basically the new muscle for the United Empire. And now, especially when you consider their scuttlebutt going around, 
that Wills brings someone new into the United Empire to fix the junior division. But honestly, I think I already know who's coming to the junior division in New Japan and in ta- by, come Duntaku. It's TJP. They're not being very subtle about it. It was already spoiled one, in September when he joined the United Empire by way of the New Japan Strong Branch here in the States. And given the TJP, when I saw him in the Great Cole Center and MLW event just last month, he was done in that United Empire green and gold. But back to this match at hand, I'm going to sit, and given how more conservative Naito's been wrestling, I'm going to give this one to the UE. We do out. Next up, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles are on the line. The Challengers. Bullet Club's cutest tag team, El Phantasmo Taiji Ishimori. The champions, Ryusuke Yaguchi and Master Wado, team six or nine. I don't care for the Oscars, Raph. As far as I'm concerned, Grammys, Oscars, Tonys, Emmys, they can all go fuck themselves. Can I focus on the wrestling dude? Anyway, moving on. Back to the matter at hand. It seems that Phantasmo's gotten his confidence back after his sun death super kick. His loaded boot was exposed to have a lead insert inside it. Now that Bullet Club's fully unified, he's got his confidence back. And I think this is a good booster for Ishimori and ELP. Throw in the fact that historically since 2014, the IWG, with the exception of the Connemara Desperado run from April of 28, from March of 2018 to January of 2019, have been bouncing around like a hot potato. So, you know the odds are not in the favor of the champions. So by that logic, I'm going to take Bullet Club's Q's tag team to walk in the challengers and walk out the new, the 70th IWGP Ishimori and Phantasmo for the fourth time as a duo or to walk out and become the 70th IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Next up, the never next up, the King of Pro Wrestling 2022 Provisional Championship match. Toriano versus Taichi. Yano defending the trophy. The rule, the options the fans will choose, choose are as follows. Yano is chosen Cherry Blossom Party Match, where both competitors must drink sake at intervals of two minutes and return to the ring within 20 seconds. Victory comes by pinball. <laughs> Submission or gang intoxicate or gang intoxicated. I just basically call this a drunken death. You look at the description, I call this a if maybe called Cherry Blossom Party. I also call it a drunken death match. On the other hand, Tai Chi's is a no rope option, is no rope ring out match. Essentially a sumo match where you gotta get your opponent out of the ring. You knock your opponent out of the ring. And I didn't know Tai Chi had he makes a means personal favorite hobby is sumo. But either way, the Holy Emperor for wants to take down the Sublime Master Thief in his festivity. We've already had a Cherry Blossom party match, and that was back on Christmas Eve when Yano was challenged by Kanamaru. So why not give the sumo match a shot? I mean, for Yano, this would be a chance to beat the beat Birdface at his own game. But can he? Will he? I'm going to be honest. I'm going to go Yano on this. I would love to see 
see how Yano outboxes Tai Chi in his own element. Now, to be in the same way he beat Okan in an amateur rules match back in November. Now, to be fair, that was actually Yano's stipulation against Okan, amateur rules, but Okan had boasted about having a great amateur background, which he does. Yano's no slouch in amateur wrestling either, but we're looking at the probability of seeing a sumo match in New Japan. But my pick is going to be Yano Toru. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people may not like Yano's antics as a comedy wrestler, but I kind of do. Next up, former LIJ members and one-time close friends turned bitter enemies collide. On one side, for the never openweight title. On one side, the ticking time bomb of Los Ingobernables Day Upon, Hiromu Takahashi. On the other side, the never openweight champion representing Bullet Club's House of Torture, Evil. Two years ago, Evil betrayed LIJ after he won the New Japan Cup. And with the assistance of Dick Togo, beat Naito to win the then double title. We both the heavyweight and intercontinental titles from Naito simultaneously. This got Hiramu pissed, and he challenged the King of Darkness only to lose and Sengoku Lord due to Dick Togo's interference. When they met in the, the third round of this year's New Japan Cup, Hiramu managed to outbox Evil. I mean, the story with Hiramu was he was basically being put against guys who are heavyweights, and he was coming out with surprise wins. He got bludgeoned by Sho in round one, even though technically Sho's still a junior, but Sho's a never open weight six man champ, but that's a side the point. Then he endured Minoru Suzuki's punishment and withstood evil and Dick Togo's shenanigans, being the King of Darkness with his own move. The story is that evil's cowardly tactics, Hiramu has now got the countermeasure. And I do believe Hiramu could. Take him down. Will Evil get his revenge, or will Hiramu outbox him? Again, some say third time's a charm in favor of Evil, but I say Hiramu may have Evil's number. So I'm going to go with Hiramu, especially if the other members, of, since the other members of House of Torture are with the exception of Togo, are going to be, in Yudro's case, too beat up to help following the eight-man tag match. And in Cho's case, he's going to be too distracted focusing on what on his match. Which I'll get to in a little bit. So, yeah, if you remove Dick Togo from the equation, Hiramu may have this one. And for, more importantly, this gives him more incentive to move up to the heavyweights after this year's Best of the Super Juniors tournament in May. I do believe Best of the Super Juniors 29 will be Hiramu Takahashi's last BOSJ of his career. Because after this, he's moving up to the heavyweight ranks. And he probably could insert himself in the G132. And winning the Never title could be the stepping stone he needs to get into the heavyweight division. Next up, for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, the challengers from the United Empire, the Great Khan and Jeff Cobb, go challenge, representing Chaos, the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Bishamon, Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi. Now, when it comes to elevating themselves during the pandemic, I would say Yoshihashi has really launched himself out from the bottom of the totem pole of chaos. Having been part of the longest reign, never openweight six-man tag team, along with Hiroki Goto and Tomohiro Ishii, and now 
as a co-holder alongside Goto of the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles. Or as Mr. Popo would put it if he met Yoshiashi, congratulations, you've, uh, you've graduated from maggot. You are now dirt. If you guys get the team, get what I just meant, reference to, it's a joke to the pecking order. Which goes, you maggots, the dirt, the worms inside of the dirt, Popo stool, Kami, then Popo. It's on New Japan World, world.com, um, but it's on Access. If you want some old stuff, Raphael, it's on Access TV, Thursday nights, 10 o'clock, not Eastern, 9 Pacific. Like immediately after Impact Wrestling, or if you have a Roku TV, catch recap past archive stuff at five o'clock. But I usually watch this stuff on New Japan World, which is a website.com, this which is a subscription based website. If you're willing to shell out 999 yen a month, which is a, roughly around nine bucks plus a global tax of around anywhere from 40, 17 to 42 cents. You can watch it. For live content, though, though you gotta watch it on New Japan World, and you better be willing to stick up or about stay up until like you watch it starting around anywhere from two to four, one to four in the morning, and because they're thirteen hours or so ahead of us, I mean ahead of the U.S. That being said, Kabano Khan. Lost to Yoshi and Goto in the 2020 World Tag League, which is the only other time these two teams met. I do expect this to be a very physical battle. Who wins? I'm going out on a limb. I'm going Bishamon to win the titles. To keep the titles. Though I wouldn't be surprised if the United Empire walks out the 93rd IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Next up is the match that I think will be the bathroom match. And you know what the sad thing is about this one? It's the semi-main event. For the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. The Challenger. The Murder Machine of Bullet Club's House of Torture show. The champion, the rogue luchador, El Desperado of Suzuki Goon. And the reason I find this sad because I know Show's gonna pull most of his usual bullshit. Feigning innocence when we know he's a piece of shit who deserves to die. Show will make his set. Here's what the article says about this Quote Show makes his second career cha- on New Japan. 1970njpw1972.com quote show makes his second career challenge for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship when he faces El Desperado in Ria Goku and for those who don't know I'm referring to, when it says Ria Goku I mean the Ria Goku Ria Goku Kokoki Gan Kokiku Gan or Ria Goku Sumo Hall in Tokyo the bout comes after a month of violent attacks on the champion when the petulant show did not get his Championship opportunity the, right away. An opportunity that he had a taint, he got through a tainted victory over Desperado on the first night of Best of Super Juniors 28. Matters would only escalate to the point of deeply personal assaults. At the New Japan Cup final in Osaka on March 27th, Sho attacked Desperado from behind on his entrance with a wrench to the jaw before ripping the champion's mask off his face. Desperado is often criticized, one to criticize a lack of fire on the part of his challengers. He can't certainly say as much here in this affair. Instead, the champion will be angry as we've ever seen him. In his third defense of his gold, on an even playing field, Desperado is just as willing as show to bend the rules to earn victory. Can cer- and can certainly give as good as he gets from the House of Torture member. But can he keep up with a numbers game and the sheer volume of dirty tactics his challenger will bring? Or is the junior heavyweight girl- gold yet... Heavyweight title, yet more gold heading to the House of Torture. 
That is the question going into this matchup. Uh, that I see happening. And personally, I am not, I'm going to hate myself for making this pick. Through his usual bullshit tactics, ref bump, low blow, wrench shot, shock arrow or snake bite, show is walking out the new IWGP heavyweight cha- junior heavyweight champion. And I fucking hate this. Show doesn't need to do these bullshit tactics. He doesn't need to fight dirty. But if they're going to culminate the feud between him and Yo at Dominion in June and have Yo win Best of Super Juniors and then beat Show's ass at Dominion, so be it. I mean, then so be it. I don't care at this point. Show's antics need to be stopped at any and all costs. And unfortunately... I don't see Despy as the guy to do it. He, don't get me wrong. Despy has come far, becoming the the guy who is the top dog of the junior division since the pandemic, since New Japan got back from the pandemic in 2020. More so in 2021, where he helped, where he managed to hold onto the junior, get the junior title twice. Once in a matchup where the title was vacated, Hiramu suffering a torn pec muscle. And then being in February, and then being Robbie Eagles in November to recapture the title. And then even beating his generation long rival, Hiramu Takahashi, at Wrestle Kingdom. Now, one could say that history may, is on the side of Despy. Sorry. Now, one could say history is on Desperado's side because the Spring Ryogoku event has never seen the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title switch hands. Sorry about that. Uh, Air Fryer recipe book fell off the desk, so I had to catch it. Anyway, I'm still going show on this one. And I don't like it. Finally, we go to our main event for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. On one side, the leader of chaos and the fourth IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. On the other side, probably one of, if not the best, technical wrestler of this of all this generation, if not of all time, the 2022 New Japan Cup winner, Zack Sabre Jr., These two want, fought each other four years ago in Ria Goku. The end result was Zack losing because he spread the damage too evenly to Okada's body. So, what is who is my pick to win this? Well, whoever wins, they're facing Naito in Fukuoka on May first in wrestling Denta- at Wrestling Dentaku. This is going to be a coin flip, so let's get out the coin. I know, Raph, but we got a tough one tonight against Chicago. Let me just do this flip. Heads, Okada. Tails, ZSJ. Tails. I am taking Zack Sabre Jr. to walk in the challenger, but walk out the new and fifth IWGP World Heavyweight champion. Okada, I love you, but this is getting... But honestly, you've been champion long enough. 
across both the regular heavyweight title and the world heavyweight title. I mean, I know it's only been about 90 day, days or so since he won the world heavyweight title, but throwing his IWTP heavyweight title runs, over six reigns, 32 defenses, and 1,870 days. Senor, I am not going to deal with you right now. Pull that shit up. I'm going to block. I'm going to delete that shit. Fucking hate you when you do that. You know that, Senor, you dimwit son of a bitch? Anyway, lock it up. No. You want freedom of speech, go some... You want freedom of speech? Why not you do... Look at the truth that's being read behind in the lines. Biden is a goddamn idiot and he deserves to die for all I care. In projecting certain things to happen are going to on someone else are going to happen to him sooner rather than later. Anyway, I'm done with this. Before Senior does another bullshit shit commie claim on me, leave a comment, smash the like, sub the channel, Mets2128 signing out. Goodbye, and good fucking night. Bang.